Council Stuart Highland Rakiura Visitor Levy Empowering Bill. The bill is set down for second reading and the reports on the three reports of the Controller and Auditor General and the reports on the international treaty examinations are set down for consideration. Are there any bills for introduction? Privacy Information Sharing Bill Introduction, Victims of Crime Reform Bill Introduction. Those bills are set down for first reading. The House comes now to questions for oral answer, and the first question stands in the name of Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Prime Minister and asks, does he stand by his reported statement that the needs of children should be balanced with the needs of other New Zealanders? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. <coughs> Mr Speaker, yes. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Is it not wrong to pit the needs of our children against the needs of other New Zealanders because children are the future of our country and every dollar spent on children is a dollar spent on our own future? The Right Honourable Prime uh, Minister. Mr Speaker, no, because the government actually raises an enormous amount of revenue through taxes and part of the job of the government is to allocate those resources as, uh, as and where they see fit. If every dollar of government resources was to be spent on children, no resources would be spent on pensions, no resources would be spent on rest homes, no resources would be spent on the environment, no resources would be spent on the health system, no resources would be spent on police, no resources would be spent on the military. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Prime Minister... Order, I've called Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Prime Minister accept that no one is arguing that every dollar in the government's spending should be spent on children, but rather we shouldn't be pitting the interests of children against other New Zealanders because every dollar spent on our children is a dollar spent on our future? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I was simply answering the question I was asked, but the government puts a high priority on young people and that's why an enormous amount of resources are applied towards young people. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Prime Minister agree with the economic consultancy Infometrics that the cost to the country of child poverty is around $6 billion per year in increased spending in health, welfare, education and justice and as a result of decreased productivity? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, can I just ask the member to clarify? That, that's the uh, work he's referring to came from the Every Child Counts uh, research done by Infometrics, right? Point of order. Speaker. Point of order, Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, it, the work's done by Infometrics, that's right, Mr. Speaker. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. It was done for the um, Every Child Counts. Actually, largely I thought the report was rubbish. Um, for a start off, the data in it was simply wrong. Uh, six of the indicators weren't available. Two of them they got wrong. The data was an indictment on the then Labor government because actually it was from 2003 to 2005. And by the way, while they were looking at the spending on children, the report didn't include health spending, working for families payments or DPB funding. Dr Russell Norman. A point of order, Mr Speaker. Order, 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 order. Now, if members have been interjecting so loudly, they may have heard a point of order was called. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question was specifically whether he agreed with the uh, estimate of the cost of $6 billion to, per year. Uh, there were many other points he could disagree with, but that was the, that was the question. Oh, I think the, the, the Prime Minister indicated what he thought of the report and therefore the cost. I, I think that was pretty clear. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Certainly. Speaker. Does the Prime Minister find it acceptable that under his government there are still 270,000 children living in poverty? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, that's not my preference, and my preference is those numbers are considerably low. In fact, my preference is that number zero. And that's one of the reasons why in the weekend we've made announcements in terms of reform of the welfare system, and there'll be more reforms to come. And the reason for that, Mr Speaker, is if one analyses those 270,000 children that are in poverty, uh, the member will find the vast bulk of them are growing up in welfare-based homes. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, in reference to his welfare announcements, given his admission yesterday that the government can't provide enough teen parent schools for every mum, 
Won't his new policy to force sole parents to be in education involve the forcible separation of 18-year-old mothers from their babies? The right honourable Mr. Speaker, no. Uh, as I pointed out uh, when I made a substantial number, number of remarks in relation to that issue, uh, we can work with teen mums uh, for solutions that may be in their home. It may be a group of mothers together with a uh, educationalist providing them support. It may be that they're going to a number of other courses. And frankly, I'm a little surprised that the member doesn't think it's a good idea that we're asking teen mums if they're in need of drug or alcohol counselling to attend that, if they would benefit from a parenting course that they shouldn't attend that, or that actually he doesn't actually fundamentally think that 16, 17 or 18 year old teen mums should get education. Well, I'm sorry, he might have that view, but it's not shared on this side of the House. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, given the Prime Minister's newfound love of education for poor people, will, will, will he support Will he support Will he support the reintroduction of the training incentive allowance so that young mums can get a degree level course because we know that when young mums get access to education we get better educational outcomes and better welfare outcomes for their kids The right honorable prime minister uh, Mr Speaker look I think the member uh, needs to reflect on how much this government's actually spending on education and the steps actually this government has been taking to make sure that that spending where it can actually targets at need, at risk young people. One of the things we actually did in Budget 2010 was actually cap the amount of expenditure going into ECE facilities in terms of them being 80 per cent teacher-led so that we could actually put $500 million more into targeting at risk young people. Point of order, Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question was specifically about would the Prime Minister support the reinstatement of the training incentive allowance? He didn't address that question. Order. Order. I invite the member to have a look at what he actually did ask. And the start of his question was barely in order, wasn't in order, but I wasn't going to stop it because it gave the Prime Minister the most free licence how he answered the question. If the member wants to have a particular answer, he must only ask what he said he'd ask, because he asked he included a whole lot more in his question. Question number... Point of order, the, uh, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave of the House to table the Green Party's uh, policy priority addressing child poverty order. in New Zealand, produced by the Green Party this year. Leave us sought to, leave us sought to table this document. Is there any objection? There is objection. 